long I stood in the foyer before finding the courage to continue. The minutes seemed to melt into hours. My momentary paralysis was broken by the sight of a lantern resting on the mantel across the vast living room floor. I walked briskly across the ancient, creaking floorboards to where the lantern rested, dodging randomly placed pieces of furniture scattered along my path. I lit the wick with my lighter and replaced the glass chimney. The room came to life with ghostly shadows cast by the glow of the small, amber flame. I adjusted the height of the wick, and an uneasiness came over me as the looming shadows began to dance menacingly around me. I decided I'd have a cigarette to still my nerves. He wouldn't be here until well after dark, and I needed complete control of my senses if I were to confront him. However, I couldn't erase the powerful images that had recently become so increasingly dominant in my thoughts. It was seven years ago when he first came to me. I had just lost my wife in a fatal car accident, and the loss was unbearable. I am not a handsome man, and I never fared well when it came to winning the affections of women. My wife was the only woman who had ever loved me, and her death left me devastated and alone. I feared I would never find another woman gracious enough to spend her life with me, and I would face the rest of mine alone. I had become a recluse in the intervening months, withdrawing from the rest of the world to be alone with my sorrow and wrestle with my feelings of guilt. I held myself responsible for her death because I was the driver of the car in which she died. The solitude soon proved to be more than I could endure. My life had become a miserable existence, and at times it seemed I was teetering on the brink of madness. The internet proved to be my only means of escape. It allowed me to vent my frustrations without being probed by society's judging eyes. I wanted to confess my darkest secrets and be absolved of all my guilt. He was more than willing to lend me his ear. During my search, I discovered a site catering to persons who had recently experienced the loss of a loved one. That's where he found me. Or perhaps I found him, lurking in the shadows of an infinite, invisible realm. I now suppose he was there searching for his next victim, like a maniacal hunter preying on the weakest members of the herd. Maybe that's what drew him to me, my weakness. He called himself Cain. He was the only one I ever told about my wife's infidelity. He seemed genuinely concerned about my state of mind and sympathetic to what she had put me through before her death. He was willing to listen, and that's what I needed during that dark time in my life. I told him everything. I told him how my marriage had been deteriorating in the months before the accident, and about the humiliation I felt when I discovered she had been sleeping with another man. I told him how fearful I was that she would leave me for this other man, and how filled with hatred and disgust I had become at the thought of her betrayal. I told him the darkest secrets that dwelled in the depths of my tortured soul, and he wanted more. I want to hear about your wife's death, he demanded. How did it happen? I want you to tell me everything. At first I thought it rude of him to ask. It wasn't something that I felt comfortable talking about and I had never spoken of the events that happened that night to anyone. But I had shared all of my other secrets with him, and this seemed like the time to unload the burden that had been wearing me down for so long. I had never confronted my wife with my knowledge of her infidelity, I began reluctantly. I was never very good with confrontations, and I figured if it ever came out in the open, she would just leave me sooner. Instead, I kept the secret locked up inside, and it festered and grew like a cancer that began slowly consuming me from within. I decided that I couldn't just stand by and do nothing. I had to do something to save my marriage, so I planned a weekend getaway for the two of us so we could spend some time alone. I thought if I showed her how much she still meant to me, then maybe I could win her back from her lover without the struggles and quarreling that bring so many marriages to a bitter end. went to great lengths to plan things out. I wanted everything to be perfect, but we arrived at I-95 at the tail end of rush hour, and the traffic was still at a crawl, so I continued driving late into the night to make up for the lost time. It was a long trip, 
and despite her goading and prodding, I refused to pull over and get some rest. I became exhausted and fell asleep at the wheel. The car sped off the expressway and tumbled down an embankment. The momentum propelled the car into a heavily wooded area where the passenger side struck the trunk of an enormous oak tree. My wife's side of the vehicle absorbed the greatest force of the impact. When I came to, I found her limp, lifeless body lying in my lap. I shook her gently but received no response, so I lifted her head to look into her face. I remember vividly how her head rolled back lazily against what was left of the Buick's blood-stained headrest and the revulsion I felt when I noticed that it had been nearly separated from her body. Her neck was split open in a grotesque, gaping grin. I gently laid her head down and screamed. I screamed until the world went black and slowly slipped away from me. That was the final grisly image that I carried with me down into the darkness. I awaited his response eagerly. However, what I received was not one of remorse or pity, but of anger and disbelief. I can't believe you're harboring any feelings of guilt after what she did to you, he said sternly. She betrayed you in the most egregious way a woman can. You can't tell me that you don't feel some kind of satisfaction for the fate that befell her, after the pain and humiliation that she put you through. You know deep down that your love for her would have never been the same. She was the guilty one. She destroyed your marriage, she destroyed your trust, and she murdered your very spirit. She got exactly what was coming to her. Tell me I'm wrong. Admittedly, I was taken aback by his response, but I couldn't deny that there was some truth in his words. My wife's infidelity had been an emasculating experience for me. Deep down in the darkest recesses of my vengeful soul, I sometimes found myself thinking that justice had been done. All women are the same, my friend, he continued. They have no souls. They only want to be desired. And one man's desire is never enough. Damn them all, he said. Damn them all to hell. And as our conversation continued into the deepest hours of the night, I began to feel as strongly as he for the injustice that had been done to me. And while the darkness slowly gave way to the first light of early morning, I began to share his views on the deteriorating morality of women. But that was before Sarah came into my life. 